Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, I guess we can uh, move on to the, the second talk of the evening. So um, we've got Stephen over here, who's going to be talking about solving the mind split and polynomial time. Um, big hand is one. Yeah, there we go. Stephen, and this is how you solve mind super and polynomial time. Uh, so, bear with me. Yeah, <laughs> problems that are traditional. <laughs> Good stuff. Right, there we go. So, in December, I gave a lightning talk. It was three minutes. It was about how to solve mind super. Um, I was very kindly invited to come here and give uh, a longer version, 15 minutes. And I thought, yeah, that's fine. No problem. Can do. Um, the last talk I did was actually quite light on details. I thought, yeah, fantastic. Instead of just explaining how to do it, we'll actually explain how to implement it instead of just how do you solve it. Uh, so how do we solve one different point in your time? Easy, yeah, we can really fill the slides. It was a great idea. Uh, I could talk about theoretical computer science. Uh, easily filled 15 minutes. Everything was going to be great until I hit one small problem. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no matter, uh, we'll come up with a new talk, a, a different talk, uh, innovative features, uh, like features such as being written on short notice. <laughs> uh, so, here goes. Things are going to get very, very weird. Um, so just bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Sergeant Sweet. My name is both alliterative and a pun for comedic effect. Yeah, this is like mine too. Right. Okay, so the year is 2030. The world has been ravaged by war and has been turned to ruins. Starting with the USA, every country on earth started planning landmines. Three months ago, we started the cleanup efforts. Trying to clean up after World War One. Three. World War Three. <laughs> Not 19, like 16. The US 2030 is World War 3. Just joking. Um, we mostly use robots for the cleanup efforts. We don't want humans to do it. It's 2030, everything's automated. But there was one task that our robots couldn't do mind sweeping. complete, right? Yeah, there we go. Full circle. So, all but one of the robots exploded from sheer confusion. Uh, the one robot that's left is called Davy, and he'll make an appearance later. Um, so now we come to you, our new army recruits. Uh, you've come in to help out with the cleanup because the robots can't do it. We've got humans to do it. It's good to see you. Your names irrelevant. Your mission <laughs> to sweep minds, and your training on the job. <laughs> your reward: leftover Christmas chocolates and pumpers. You. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. And now, uh, great as tech is, this is the point where we swap a laptop. Uh, we just, uh, just swap, swap the, put this one over here. Um, they don't teach you tech in army school. Um, so I said power cable. Yeah, fantastic. Go to front that. I got the warning of the two of that. Minesweeper, uh, welcome to basic training. You are a new recruit, and we are going to teach you how to sweep minds. So, hands up, who has played Minesweeper before? Training is mandatory. You won't be getting out of it like that. This is how Minesweeper works. Every cell can contain either a mine or it can be, or it can be clear. If it is clear, it will contain a number from 0 to 8, telling you how many mines are surrounding it. For example, this one says that those two mines contain, sorry, those two cells contain exactly one mine. Uh, and the blank ones are zeros, which you can, uh, yeah, they're zeros. So the three in the middle, for example, this says that those three cells must contain exactly three mines. Of course, that means that all of them must be mines. And we can flag it. We can see that here in the target section. Three cells, three mines, it's red, we can flag it. If we click that, now this two is satisfied. It says that it needs two mines next to it, and it already has two. So we can satisfy that. We can uh, clear around that constraint. And we can do that, and we can just repeat this. So now this one is already satisfied, this one's already satisfied, and there's only one way to satisfy this two. That's basic training, and this is where the audience participation kicks in. <laughs> so does anyone see, for chocolates, what we could clear or flag here? I want you to put your hands up, and then Gavira's going to run at you. Take your pink over here. Uh, the, 
bottom left. Like, bottom left too. Well, yeah. look, I've actually got this. Look, CSS transform and everything. Oh, so cell twenty eight. <laughs> we'll have in the future, please. <laughs> <laughs> so correct. We could talk about. Uh, I think that that was approximately as good as one of these red chocolates. There you go. Very good. <laughs> Do shout out if you're vegan, please, because we've got pom bears and they're going to have to go to use. Anyone else? <laughs> what else can you clear now using what I've just told you about clearing and flagging? Show the pe- numbers. Show the numbers, thank you. I spent hours on that. <laughs> 44. 44. Yeah. So, 44. This one down here you can clear Clint. because of this constraint. Yeah. Yes. So because that one's already satisfied, we can clear it. Any more? This one's pretty easy. Um, you show the numbers again. Yeah. I'm going to remember about 18, please. Number 18. I haven't taught you how to do that. Anyone else? Fifty-eight. <laughs> 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 yeah, tell 58. Yes, you can. You can clear it because of this one. This one's already satisfied, so we can clear around there. Does anyone see anywhere else that we can clear now? No. Because there is no other place to be cleared. <laughs> that means that it's time for advanced training. <laughs> Sometimes there's no way that we can clear or flag in our Minesweeper board. And that's because we actually, instead of looking at any of these individual constraints, we need to look at how two constraints interact. For example, this constraint says that any of those two cells must be a mine. One of the two cells must be a mine. This constraint says that one of those three cells must be a mine. But we know because of the orange constraint that it's one of the two on the left. Because, so that's subtraction. Essentially, we can say that that cell on the right can't be a mine, because the mine must be one of the two on the left. In a very general term, we can do subtraction any time you have one constraint which is a subset of another. Um, and you can see that actually Davey there has been repurposed, and his job is now to automatically clear things that are trivial. Uh, so, because we that subtraction, we knew there wasn't a mind there, Davy has helpfully cleared it for us. Um, and then we can just proceed using the things that we've learned in the past. But subtraction is hard, and you are only recruits. So we're going to have a little bit more training. Um, in this situation, again, we can apply the same rule that we had before, where this one says there is a mind in one of these two, this one says there's a mind in one of these three. Subtract, and we can clear that one. But actually, we can try and apply it here, and we end up with a new constraint. It's not something that we can clear or flag immediately. Uh, so because there's one line here, and there's two, so yeah, there's one line in these two, which means that there's one line in these three in order to satisfy the two. We can't do anything with that yet, but if we subtract this one again, and we subtract both of these ones from the two, we can say that there can't be anything in that corner. There is one other place that we can do subtraction here, which is on these two cells. They produce constraints where one is a subset of another, and we can subtract to clear these bottom three cells. Then we can repeat doing. We can repeat this by finding uh, constraints which overlap and eventually work through the board. Um, so pay attention. Actually, we've just seen something else. These cells with lines through them. Davy has got an upgrade. Davy's job is now not only to clear things that he sees that are trivial, but he's also going to highlight cells that can be cleared or flagged. So no more chocolates are going out for telling me where I can clear or flag things. <laughs> we can process these through with Davy's help and clear the ones that we need. So let's go back to yours. Does anyone see anywhere we could do some subtraction? We want two constraints that are overlapping. Can I have cell 18 again then? Cell 18. <laughs> so which constraint are you doing that based on? Uh, the two ones at the top. These two? Yeah. So you want to subtract those from each other, and that will produce not cell 18, cell 32 can be cleared. Yeah. Because, so, so it's cell 18 to mine, in my opinion. Not necessarily. Uh, no, we can't because say that. Because the two top ones. They could be mine either of these two, and it would satisfy both of these. <laughs> if, have a chocolate! <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Anywhere else that we could subtract? <laughs> there was one below. There was one below. Someone else! <laughs> <laughs> Run, Gavir! Go and give the microphone to this someone! <laughs> We've got. Right, where can we subtract? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, if I click this one, does anyone see any other cell which would create a constraint which is a subset of this one? No, no, no. The one in the middle. This one? That yeah. One. Yeah. Pick yeah. Yeah. a number. 1933 and 47. Yeah. 19. 
33, 47. Yes, because we subtract these constraints from each other. There must be a mine here, so there can't be one in any of these three cells. We subtract these two constraints, one minus one zero, there can't be any uh, mines in these. Um, good job, have a chocolate. Right. <laughs> I forgot the number. I stick to technology. Right, someone from this side. Anywhere else that we could subtract for, uh, subtract two constraints. I'll give you a hint. One of them is that one. We want some, a cell which produces a constraint to the subset of that orange box. The one above it? I really need to start doing Pick a number. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> number 19. So, this one. So, neither of those is a subset because they, they only overlap. We need one constraint which is entirely contained within the other. Um, the one that I had in mind was this one. So this one says that those two cells must contain one, and that's entirely contained within the orange section. If we subtract those, then we actually have the four says there are four mines in its constraint, and the one says there's one there, which means that the remaining three cells must all be mines, and we can mark them like that. Are we kind of generally following? Yeah? So, yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you through one more that we can do, and then we'll, we'll go back to you. So this three, there are four cells there, and it says that there's one mine, because it's already got two of them. So we know that exactly one of these four cells is a mine. <coughs> the constraint created by this one is a subset of the orange one. That means that we could, we could do subtraction. In this, in this case, it makes sense to, because that blue constraint also contains exactly one mine. Which means the bit that is only orange here, the non-overlapping bit, contains zero mines. If we subtract, you can see it's going to create two cells with zero mines and it's been cleared automatically for us, because we know that it can be cleared. So, Davy has broken temporarily, and we've just turned him back on. We can see that this one is clearable, because that one is already satisfied, and then all of these are satisfied. We've hit some zeros and automatically cleared those. So, I reckon that some of you now are going to be able to tell me where we can subtract. So pick two, pick two cells with overlapping constraints, where one constraint is a subset of another. 10 and 24, yes. So this one says that those two must contain one mine, and this one says that those three must contain one mine. If we subtract, we can clear that one. Davy will tell us that we can clear this one, because there are only two places for those mines, and then we can clear this one, because they're already satisfied. So, is there any or else that we can clear? Can anyone see anywhere where we could have two overlapping, a two, one constraint, a subset of another? Yes. Next to that three, uh, you can we have that two that need, there needs to be a bond either in seventy one or seventy two. So fifty six and seventy are not a bond. Seventy one or seventy two. So fifty six. Fifty six and seventy, you can give. That sounds like something I haven't taught you yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, we will come round to that. So you're actually bang on. This is something that we can't do yet. We do, there is no subtraction we can do here because there are no two constraints where one is an actual subset. However, there are some more advanced techniques that we can do. So, this is a technique that I'm calling reduction. That's what we call it in the army. Yes, Ron? What about clicking wildly in the things and hoping? <laughs> well, you see, we're in the military now, and the military protocol says that you can't just go randomly walking across a minefield. In fact, no matter how hard I click this, it won't let me die. <laughs> um, you must use the constraints because. <laughs> Let's work on this, right. So, <laughs> given a given of this one, this says that these three cells must contain exactly two mines. However, that also says that any two of those three cells have to have between one and two mines. Because the cell that isn't inside those two can either be a mine or it isn't. If the, if the one that we exclude is a mine, then there'd be one in, this, in these two. Let's say, if this one was a mine, then there would be one mine in these two. If it wasn't a mine, there'd be two in these two. So, we can do that for any of these three cells. <laughs> if we click reduce, it will, cr it will create three new constraints down here. One that says there is one to two mines in these two, one that says there's one to two mines in these two, and one that says there's one to two mines in these two. If you're thinking about it, that now allows us to do some more subtraction. For example, previously this two didn't, uh, wasn't a subset of the one, but by removing one of the cells in the constraint and giving us that little bit of uncertainty, 
we can now subtract it from the wall. So there is one to two lines inside this orange constraint, and there's exactly one inside the blue constraint. So we know there can't be two in the orange constraint, and we know that there isn't any here at all, because they're all inside the orange constraint. And subtracting it will show us that, and let us clear that one set. We can then just go back to our more normal subtraction. Uh, we can do the two in that section. There's only one in the ones constraint, so there must be a line there. And then we can go back to our normal clearing. There we go. Success. <laughs> but there are even more complicated constraints. Uh, sorry, even more complicated setups, such as this one. Uh, this is actually a commonly given example as to why my mine sweeper is empty complete, <laughs> but we can kind of solve it here, mostly because we're humans. This too, if we reduce it and take this constraint, we can subtract from the corner two, which says these five cells have two of them, but we know that these orange have one to two of them. Subtract that, we get a new constraint which says these three have zero to one cells, uh, zero to one lines, and then we can do the same on the other side. Reduce this constraint, take the bottom one, and subtract that from our new one. And we can actually say that that corner cannot be a line, because we know at least one line is in the, uh, the two above it, and at least one line is in the two to the left of it. That satisfies the two in the corner, and that lets us solve that. And from here, we can just work our way around with basic clearing and flagging, no subtraction required. There is one other button that I have here, which is merge, and I'll briefly explain that to you. Essentially, Sometimes we can end up with constraints down here, which constrain the same cells, but with different upper and lower bounds. If we have two constraints which constrain the same cells, but one has a higher lower bound, and one has a lower upper bound, we can merge those together and take the highest lower bound and the lowest upper <coughs> bound. For example, if we reduce this one and take uh, that one, these two, and then we do yeah, we reduce this one. Sorry, this is a little bit complicated, but it does come in handy. So, we can then subtract these two, and we can say, as we had before, that this contains between zero and one lines. Obviously, that means that these two also contain between zero and one lines, which is this constraint. But now these two constraints are both constraining the same two cells. One says there's between one and two lines, and one says that there's between zero and one lines. For both of those to be true, it can only be true that there is exactly one line. And in fact, we can merge it and get a constraint that says there's one line. I'm not sure you're going to need that. But you might do, depending on how you solve this next bit. Going back to the things that we've just learned. Take a moment and take a breath. Have a look at this and see if we can see anywhere that we could use reductions and subtraction to solve this. Hands up again. I've got a lot of chocolate to give away. Yes, uh, cells. Here we go. 74, yes. Why? Which can strike you basing that on? So are you these two? Yep. So if we reduce uh, the two, sorry, reduce the two, we turn those on, bear with me. <laughs> so if we reduce the two and take the rightmost two cells, and that says there's between zero and one cells in there, uh, which doesn't tell us anything about this, other than that there are zero to one cells in there as well. So we can't be too sure, because the two already has one bomb next to it, then all we can say is that there is one line here, meaning there's between zero and one here, because it might be here. <coughs> then when we subtract, we just end up saying again, there's zero no, to no, one. No, but it's zero mines, in that, yeah. And this one here? Yeah, that one doesn't have a mine. Because there is one, that's two, Right, yes, we've just done this the wrong way. So, this one subtract this one is what we wanted. This one says that these two cells must contain one line. This one says that these five cells must contain one line. Obviously, the only place a line could be is in the orange, and we subtract. That was my bad interpreting instructions wrongly. But, if we follow through with this clearing and flagging, we can end up clearing all of this. Good job! Anything else that we could do? Can I have cell 18, please? Cell 18? <laughs> You still can't say anything about so cell 18. You, you, you can't say anything about cell 18. This is... No, it's literally impossible. I haven't coded the functionality of just clicking a cell. I made this. We'll get there. Cell 97, okay. So cell 97 is why you have there. Should have seen that one coming. One of the things that we looked at quite a bit before was looking at these ones and twos that overlap. So I'm going to throw
throw it out there straight away, then we can reduce this to and just take the two leftmost cells. So we know that there are between one and two lines in this orange section, and if we subtract the one, then we can say that there is zero lines inside the green, because there is a minimum of one, a maximum of one, and we know that there's at least one, so yes, we can know that there aren't any lines there. If we clear that, it allows us to kind of follow through with these very basic uh, clearing and subtracting until we get stuck again. But there are still some other places that we could uh, clear. There's some subtraction that we do. Um, I'm not, yeah, you don't even need over, you don't even need reductions here. So you've seen this before. Can anyone see anywhere where we have two overlapping constraints, where one is a subset of another? Yeah, numbers, here we go. Uh, 81, 82. Uh, yes, yeah. so these two overlap. They're not quite um, subtraction, but we can reduce the three. We can take the two rightmost cells, and then we can subtract those two cells from the two. And that's going to tell us that there's between one and two lines inside those three rightmost ones. Do we see anywhere else that we can go from there? 91, 92. So, that's, uh, do you mean these two? Yeah. Yeah. So, if we reduce the four, is that what you want? Yeah. yeah. Take the two rightmost cells from there, and then subtract that from the three, which is actually the one, <coughs> and that can clear that set. Good job. I've been really forgetting about these. You just need to shut half. You can have one as well. Good job. Right. So, we've managed to clear that three. Where else can we do now? That's actually opened up some new possibilities for us. Here are the numbers. Next to that 4, you can clear the 61. I think it's not... 61 is this one here. Yes. And I think it's the same because of this. Because of these ones, yeah. Yeah. So the 1 says that these two must contain one mine. And the 4, it has three of its bombs already, so this L shape contains one mine. If we subtract those, we can clear that 1. And we'll open that 1 cell. Um, yeah. You can just keep going anywhere else that we see. That three just opened up another thing. <laughs> uh, the three opens up. So can you give the numbers? Yeah, here are the numbers. Seventy-five is not the mine, right? Because of that three that just appeared. So it's because the same rule. Seventy-five is not the. Which two cells are you combining here? Which two constraints? The constraints of the two from forty-five and fifty-nine. Yes, these two. Yes. Fantastic. So yes, the three has two of its mines already. We know that it must be satisfied by those two cells, and we can clear that. We can keep going. We're, we're not stuck yet. <laughs> three and the four. Three and the four. Here are the numbers. 74 and 75. 74 and 75 are, yes. So if we take these two, we can subtract. Yes. 
76 and 77. These two constraints, we, do you want me to reduce the four? We can't reduce the four. We can't reduce either of these. Um, where? Right. I'm going to click this button. What has this done is it's changed this to show the, the remaining number of bombs rather than the current number. So, let's have a look. Where can we sell? Cell 83. Cell 83. 83 is that over here. And how are we doing this? Which constraints? Uh, 68's got one line next to it already. We've got to change so it's showing us the remaining number. It's actually a three. Uh, but you want me to... Yeah, can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I mean, right. So yeah, there we go. We subtract that. That's the difference between zero and one line down there. Um, can we there? Can we there? Live demos are hard. <laughs> 73 and 78. 23 and 78. 23. 93 and 78. Come here, give him the microphone. 93 and 78. 93 and 78 can be subtracted from each other. No? Right. What I'm looking at is uh, this. No, sorry, these two. This three says that these three cells must contain two lines. But this three also says that these two must contain two lines. That helps us solve that one. And then we can hopefully just follow these through with clearing and flagging. That was a bit of a pain. And here, actually, one of the constraints we produced earlier by uh, reduction lets us say that that one's clear. Because the two, we said there was between zero and one here. We know there was one, so that one, this one couldn't be a mark. And we can follow these all the way up. And in fact, we can follow basically everything all the way up. Which just leaves this section. I'm just going to come out right now and say that this is actually impossible to solve currently. You can't say, there's, there's two options here. The mine could be there, and it could be there, and it could be there, or there could just be one here and one here. But actually, we know the total number of mines because we, we uh, the, the boys in the uh, espionage department <laughs> has told us the number of mines. <laughs> And this is your final part of training. Have, let's, let's, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm going to warn you before. I don't want to trouble us. Have you got any more hard hats? I'm going to do a little memo. There you go. Right. So, looking at the fact that we now know the total number of mines, this board has six mines. We can use that like any other constraint. We know that there are three mines in this section. So we can subtract these two constraints. And that produces this new uh, constraint. It says that there are seven, uh, seven cells with three mines. We can do the same on the other side and get down to the fact that there are now no mines in either of those top two corners. Because we know that six. And we, we've accounted for all six. After that, we can just follow these through. And this is solvable with the subtraction and overlap, uh, subtraction and reduction stuff that we talked about earlier. So if we now know the total number of mines, right, does anyone see what we can do with this? Here are your cell numbers. It's worth a chocolate. 60. 60. Yeah. You, can, you can subtract this constraint. So we have this constraint with 5, and this constraint here is a subset of that. Yeah? Yeah. We know that there is one line in that blue constraint. There are five, two lines in the orange. We can subtract, and we can now say that in that remaining orange constraint, there is one line. We can do the same back up here, and we can subtract and we can answer that there are no mines in that top section. Because as I said before, there are two options. There are either two mines or three mines. We know that there are only two mines, so we can just accept that solution. We can then follow it through, and we have solved this mine field. So you said Woo! <laughs> we said that there was no way of knowing, and there isn't. Until we had, until we got to the very end and accounted for all the other mines. Um, so well done, army recruits! Um, you have successfully cleared your first minefield. There are only 14 more to go today, and then you'll be able to return home to your wives and families. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Have some more chocolates. This is not going to Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't do what? Throw the chocolates. <laughs> right. There you go. Have some chocolates. Right. Um, that was how to solve
life in polynomial time? The answer is uh, use humans and not computers. Um, my name is Stephen Waterman. You can read the code for this on GitHub at Stephen Waterman. I've got a website, stephenwaterman.uk. All the links are on the website. There we go, even better. Um, yeah, Cookie, like, talks to me about what on earth just happened. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good rest of the evening. Thank you very much.